I wanted to show a video here of how to put the Clearview Racing Digital Enhancement Receiver, which blows away everything else out there. How to put that into Bat Shark Dominator goggles. These are the HD3 version. Right there, how to put it in the goggles and still have the goggles lightweight. And notice I got directional patch antennas. Clearview specifies that you have to match your antennas. It's not really a diversity. It's more of a black magic software enhancement digital uh, cleanup, but you want to have the same antenna. So if you're going to use patch, you got to use the same patch. If you're going to use uh, vertical polarization, just a dipole, you got to use the same on both sides. But I made it where it's nice and stiff. I also reinforced the circuit board inside. I shrunk the circuit board. And I list all the parts in the description of the video, so if you want to do this yourself, it can save you some R&D because these goggles are quite expensive, especially adding a clear view. And I do it first, and it saves you a little bit of risk doing it. But I do have to say this is more of an advanced hobbyist type thing. If you're a beginner, probably better off just tape this thing on the front. But we lost a lot of weight in this case. That's the whole idea here, is that I didn't use the case, just using the circuit board. And the goggles are quite manageable, also very tough. I don't know if I'd want to drop them, but it's definitely tough where you can throw it around and not worry about breaking things. Because of the, I got the aluminum reinforcement. These screws, they're metric on this antenna and it doesn't matter that the antenna is upside down the polarization is where the solder is connected so it's vertical now I use I use lit vertical polarization on my transmitter because I can do my tiny whoop at 18 grams by using this you could also use your circular polarization but I get no difference between circular and linear polarization in performance. And uh, and I can definitely trim off a gram, you know, just by using a piece of coax. And if you see it soldered, do a little solder, do, I think it's 12.7 millimeters. And then let's reinforce a little bit of shoe goo right there. But you know, that's, you know, I mean, we might not fly. 18 gram quads, I love them. So, I gotta, let me show you how I put these uh, goggles together. Here's my work in progress. I wanted to test it out before I neaten it up. Power converters right here. It goes four and a half to nine volts in, nine volts out. Notice I'm just wired up right on my DC input and I also removed the polarity protection diode because it that's a half a volt drop which is hurts your efficiency and using this type of battery it's impossible to do reverse polarity so no need for the polarity protection diode you'll see it right on the back side right in there so I just jumped that out got my plus and minus going into my power supply here's the diagram so you can see pins 1 and 2 are your VN so you want to jump pin 1 to pin 7 just do a little jumper there because this is an opto isolated, which you don't need. You're gonna, we're using a common ground. And I've already taped it up. But basically, I got my two wires in, and then I go ahead and I run my two wires out right to the other side here. And then I go to pin three, which is ground. 
and I haven't put on my turn my power off circuit yet I'll have to do that so right now I'm running the 9 volt just all the way in to my circuit board pretty clear view and notice I depopulated the barrel connector and also the two audio jack outs just to make it all nice and neater you do need to know how to do rework if you're going to be depopulating this board so I used a real tiny coax for my video you can see right there the video is goes from ground to pin 6 and you can get on the internet here's your fat shark wiring right here now VCC is 5 volts which does not power to clear view and it also ties to the on off switch right here but they're tricky that 5 volts you're either going to send it to pin 1 or you're going to send it to the HDMI converter chip so you really can't do anything on that circuit board if I want to make the clear view turn off I'm going to have to do a circuit where I monitor pin 1 it really would work but I'm going to use a FET and a bipolar I'll show you that I'll add that in that's why I got the little poto board here I can add all the parts that I need so that way when I turn off power it's going to turn off for the clear view and then I can use my flight simulator cable here now something else here what I did worked out pretty good is I stiffened the board because I wanted to save weight and rather than having this big old clunky piece of aluminum hanging off my face I just put a piece of sheet metal here this is just galvanized which is basically zinc plated and it really stiffened it up a lot you got to use a big soldering iron there and then I soldered it on the back side you can see I actually ran a bead here in the middle and on the other end and then I also soldered it right here so this could probably I could probably drop this thing and not bust my $400 Clearview board and this is the Clearview racing because it's the same as the Pro uh, the features the Pro has I don't really care about and, uh, and so but it's they're really stiff now which is cool it's glad to see that so this is going to get all neatened up but I wanted to show you and I have it just here as a prototype stage I'll put the case I'll put the covers on I'll shrink wrap this I'm going to put a piece of chloroplast behind it and I'll notice here I also went ahead and grounded the two receivers a little bit better off of my main ground and whenever you solder on these it's good to use your circuit board cleaner to get to all the, the rosin off because notice how clean that solder is I used the flux cleaner cleaned it all up here's the clear view pin out on the circuit board okay video audio right ground those three pins there and then audio left is that side now you have to run your 9 volt power which is there and your ground which is there I was eluding that I'm gonna have a power off feature with the power switch which is cuts to 5 volt and but on this video I don't want to make it too complicated because I'm actually going to add a microphone with amplifier so see Tiny Whoop doesn't have any audio and you know look how small that camera is and you really don't want to have the extra weight of a microphone on the Tiny Whoop anyway but uh, I'm going to add a microphone into the goggles 
so that if I want to do any audio commentary while I'm flying and recording, you know, it'll record that. So I'll do another video where I'm going to add the microphone circuit and also what's going to work is a reed switch relay. So when the 5 volt comes on, it turns on the 9 volts for the clear view. And this clear view, it won't run below, I believe it's like 8 volts. I put it on the variable power supply. And I mean, they probably could run it on five if they redesigned it but you know that's it is what it is so you do use the boost converter to get the nine volts out of the two cell battery these batteries are great because they have the fuel gauge which is nice and what else of course you got to be able to open your goggles up i made these holes with a soldering iron they're elongated to fit the nylon ties and these are the 18 pound nylon ties the skinny ones and there's a little bit of double stick tape kind of making it all stay and then the nylon ties you know make sure it stays on there good um, you can see they feed you can feed nylon ties straight through without having to open the goggles up so if I want to take this antenna off I just cut these ties and I could put on, you know, if I want circular polarization or even if I want coax to go to, you know, external mounted antennas, I could do that. And uh, that's the beauty of the nylon ties. You can replace them easily. Uh, what else? I did notice there's a ribbon connector for this circuit board which is, if you ever worked on laptops, you'll know what I'm talking about. I would suggest not disconnecting the ribbon connector. Uh, it has little fingers that tend to bend when you put it back in and I had to press them straight and it was giving me a little bit of trouble where if I probably if I were to disconnect that ribbon connector again I'd end up being having to replace the ribbon. So the, when the mods are done you know just keep all your connectors so you know don't unplug them that is. So let me sum up, I'll sum up right now what's done. You open the goggles, you access your power supply circuit board, you add your boost converter, and it gets added directly onto the inputs right here of your jack, of your input DC jack. You can remove the polarity protection diode, just jump it out. It goes to the boost converter. The boost converter runs over to the other side. It gives you ground and nine volts, and it's a nine volt regulated. No matter what my battery is, I'm gonna get nine volts to the clear view, and that's important so you don't lose your vision. You don't have to use the breadboard circuit board. You could just use the 10th inch header, which I have on the parts list. You can hook the ground because I wanted a beefier ground. That's why I got two wires that run through the front of the gog inside the goggles. And you're going to have your ground, your 9 volt. 9 volts going to go to the clear view. The clear view is going to send back video. You could send back audio if you're doing drones that have audio. You can hook those up. It's all on that uh, diagram and the clear view mods depopulated if you're really good would know how to depopulate and what i use solder braid i don't have a fancy suction machine i just use plain old solder braid i'll have that on the parts list so when you depopulate you can then you can add the wires directly to the board shrink the board after you do that and I got white electrical tape see how it neatens up the ends right there really nice after you shrink it you you have your piece you have your shrink long you trim it with your scissors so you got your button showing and then you're just going to want to open up there and just put your little piece of white electrical tape on both ends you can kind of see it right there close that up 
you could do different antennas. These worked out really nice. They stiffened up nicely. Um, if you're doing circular polarized, you could probably do a similar thing uh, with the circular polarized uh, patch antennas. And then you'll have the most awesome goggles in the world. There's clear view as night and day. If you want to just look at the videos, clear view versus um, I was using, I forgot, the diversity one that everybody uses. And yeah, don't waste your time on it. The, um, yeah, there's, there's no, nothing touches clear view because of the digital enhancement. And, uh, and so that's how you make the goggles. I hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.